Hello and welcome to another tutorial from the Golden Ribbon. Today we're looking at the flat house cross section. And in this tutorial we're going to have a lot of icons for you for free download so you can get them. And we're just going to be exploring a different concept, not really going much into the placement of information, but rather looking at a new concept that we haven't taken on before. And that is the concept of the cross section. And this is a popular design that's used in um, modern infographics to help compartmentalize information into their various sections while whilst comparing them to the whole. And a good example of this would be the house, as you saw in the example. Right here in front of me, I have a canvas 1700 by 1700. Also, I have the colors on my right hand side as usual. I have this inside here, this shape here, just to help me with the proportions, but you won't really need this because I'm gonna take you how to create this shape. And we're gonna look at the creation of some of the icons as well. So let's get straight into it. First up, we're gonna go into our polygon tool and we're gonna make sure that our polygon count has three corners in the tools control box. Let's give it a different color so we can tell it apart. We're gonna rotate this as best we can. Let's zoom in, just holding control and using the third mouse button just to scroll in. Good. Then we're just going to press control shift and C or go to path and object to path to take it out of the polygon object so we can no longer use it as a polygon and we're just going to stretch it out go to get this option to see where the handles actually edit the nodes you can click right here show transformation or handles for selected nodes and that will give you these handles and we treat the individual nodes as the as if they were the transformation or objects that we see here or as if they were objects that we can transform with the rotate skew and the scale handles. So we've got our triangle here. We're just gonna move on now to create an oblong or uh, using our rectangle tool. And voila. Let's get rid of the circles. And then at the bottom we have one last rectangle. Hold shift to scale up both sides proportionately. And then we're gonna double click to go into our handles for the rectangle. And we're gonna hold control and shift and just drag the circle down so that the circle comes down proportionately. I'm gonna duplicate this and carry it down a notch. And then we have our shape. So let's just add the colors, good and then change this color. What we're gonna do, we're just gonna bring this down a bit. Mm -hmm. That looks good. And then just select everything. Go to path and union. So we have one set thing. In fact, before we unify it, let's duplicate this triangle, move it up, and then go to path and union. Good. Let's get rid of this since we've created it already and then we're going to go in and just put this on our main canvas right here carry this triangle down Good. i'm going to give this triangle a color of yellow and then i was going to hold control and shift while i scale it down i'm going to paste it in the middle as best i can all right i'm not going to be accurate with dimensions in this one so it's really to the effort that I have the time. I don't have the time to make it perfect. So, you know, please keep that in mind. I'll just be taking you through how to do it. But in your time, you can definitely take your time and do it right. You know, so we have this here. We have our two rooms at top and have two rooms at bottom at the bottom right here. 
not sure why it's moving at the end. Good. Let's drag these down a bit. And a bit more. Okay. Create three of these. rooms is looking okay all right then so we have our rooms we're just gonna add our colors now I think this was purple this was beige this was green and this was blue and this is red okay I know that color themes are a problem for a lot of persons and that's totally understandable. It take, took a lot of time for me to understand how the colors work together. After a while, you kind of get a knack of it. But what you can do is that, and don't be afraid to use the color themes, the hexadecimal values that I set up for you. They help you find the right color combinations. And then as you get to do more of these things, you'll definitely get to see a pattern in the way which colors work together to produce the best results, especially for flat design and um, for, for trendy designs like that, you know. When you're going into more skeuomorphic designs where their gradients and um, shadows are, are more important, you know, you have to apply the basics that you learn from flat design to to get those other shades looking right but at least you'd have the foundation okay um, let's drop this okay so I'll drop them underneath and let's duplicate this let's join them together and then select you and intersect S setting the stage so that we can start this so as we add a room we're gonna do we're gonna take a look at three icons so let's add the room so, okay let's add a room let's add you add our rooms each time one, two, three. Oops. Let's copy you. And put up. Zoom it up a bit. Zoom it up a little bit more. And as I mentioned, all icons that you see in this tutorial will be free for you to download on my website in the blog post that corresponds for this particular for this particular tutorial also there is um, a font that I use this inside this tutorial also that you can get to download I think it's called this is Tint. I'm gonna double check that and see what the name of it is. I think it's called Stint. But all of them will be there for you to download as I go through them. Okay, let's put you in. Drop you below, lift you up, and um, get rid of that there's no need for that to be there okay and you guys uh, let's get rid of you push up okay I've accidentally copied this purple
Okay, let's just drop you here. And uh, basically I'm just fitting in the icons right now. And then we'll go into the design of the three icons. The three number three icons that we're going to be looking at in the creation of this flat design. So all in all, this tutorial is actually very simple. It's not covering much in terms of advanced effects, rather expressing a topic or uh, expressing a style of execution for the way that you do your infographics. And once you get this cross-sectional design going, you know, you can definitely create some very compelling work. You know, I know infographic artists who have built their name basically on cross-sectional design. And their stuff looks quite amazing. So, you know, you can definitely take this sort of design very, very far. And in the future, I definitely see myself covering more advanced forms of this cross section and those who had look took a look at my recent wind energy infographic will see a cross section of the actual wind turbine and you get to see inside and you know it, it creates a very technical and very compelling aspect of the infographic when you get to see the inside of how these things work laid out beautifully and in a coherent and comprehensive way that makes it easy for everybody to understand it definitely adds a whole new dimension to your infographics so we have here our icon we have here our house let's add the first icon we're going to take on well the f i'm going to put these as two in one which is the sun and sun and the clouds and this is a very popular way to do suns for flat design these days you create the two circles and you reduce the opacity sometimes you can just reduce the lightness but in this case i reduce the opacity of the outer rim looking like the bands of the sun next we're going to add the clouds and i'm going to make this white bring the opacity up let's kind of scale it down a bit double click we're going to select the circle handle control and shift and drag down to create this circular section right here duplicate it again and then we're going to turn on our snap tool make sure that your edges the bounding box snap the bounding box is selected as well as the snap nodes path and handles make sure that your snap to path interception and cost nodes to rectangle corners are selected and that's just to ensure that everything snaps okay so if we go in here we notice that we get a snap and it's looking really good so we're just going to drag this out here and drag this out here good let's give these a different color so we can all see what's happening so we're going to create a square and it's going to take off the snap for now good I'm going to give this square the purple color so that we can see what's going on so we notice that this is going to fill in these two so we're going to select these two as well as the purple and we're going to go to path union and we can almost see our cloud already in fact i'm going to invert the colors slightly I'm going to make this white to make it easier for you to see. And we can see already, we already have our very styled cloud there with the circles put together. All we need to do is intersect these two. So we're just going to intersect it with, not intersect, just have to difference them. I'm going to go to path and difference and we get our cloud. And then we can adjust the different edges of the clouds to get what I like to call the Star Trek cloud effect because it kind of looks like the Star Trek Explorer the ship a Star Trek Enterprise ship 
and then you can always flip it around to get different effects and you can play about with it, you know, reduce the size to create diversity in your clouds and so. So this is our first icon which is the sun and clouds. The next one we're gonna take a look at. It's an interesting one to take a look at is this icon right here, which is the globe. Good. Okay, so what we're going to do to create the globe, we're going to create two circles again. Let's create them. In fact, three circles really. Change this middle one to blue. So you create one more, leave it at the same size. I'm going to select this one in the outer rim, press Control shift and minus sign, which is the same thing as path and difference. And then we're just gonna scale this in a bit. And we have the edge that's going to create the globe. Then we're gonna create this polygon to cut the holder so we get this diagonal cut. We're gonna create a rectangle. Let's make it purple and bring this rectangle down. I'm going to duplicate the rectangle, hold control so that I can rotate in increments and then I'm going to grab it and bring it down and let's just stretch it out a bit more. Yeah, good. Lastly, I have this good edge right here. Right now it's a path, it's an object. So I'm going to change this object to a path with control shift and C, which is the same thing as object to path so that when we double click it we get the nodes and then we're going to lift the node, one of the, this node right here up and that will give us the slanted look right there but then let's change it to yellow and it's all a case of drawing the lines so we're just going to draw the lines now draw the longitude and latitude lines that iconically make up the globe. Let's take a look at this and kind of get as neat as possible. Uh, because I'm struck for time, I have to, my line, my curves won't be so nice, but you can definitely take your time and make the curves how you want them to, to look. Good. All right, and then we're going to draw the lines across. Okay. And that should be it. I'm going to select all of these lines apart from the globe. And we want to make them two. We're gonna give them the red color right here. So we're gonna press D. Or if it doesn't D doesn't activate, go to dropper tool and hold shift so that we are selecting the stroke and select this right here. Put this to two. Good. Next with all of them selected. We're going to change these strokes to our path so we can go stroke to path or hit Control Alt and C. And with them still selected, we're going to hit, we're going to combine union them now that they're paths. We're going to go path and union. So we get a look right here. Right? Then we're just going to duplicate the globe, move that out of the way, select a union unified path that we just made. Press Control Z to put back the circle. Select that circle also. And we're gonna go path and intersection and that will make the lines fit. Good, so that's our globe. Good, our second icon. And for the third icon, we're gonna take a look at how to do this sofa right here. This fun so far. 
And for this, we're going to create a rectangle, curved edges, holding Control and Shift, but not so much. Yeah, that looks like good. Let's move it to the side. Create two circles. Let's try and make them the same size. Put them in yellow so we can tear them apart. Good. So we have our two circles. Great. Let me know where they are. Ah, great. All right, so next, what we're going to do now, we're going to create a line that joins it. Freehand, try and get it to join up to the edge as best as possible. to move it around okay then we want to create this sort of curve so what we're going to do select you two and we're going to create a new node and we're going to make this node smooth and then just drag this node out adjusting the handle so that we get a sort of smooth look on top of the circle mm -hmm. and then I'm going to do the same for this one insert new node change the new inserted node to smooth and bring it in and then stretch out the handles holding control while you're stretching and that should give us a nice circular motion right there okay you're gonna have to play about with this one a little bit but once you get it then you can there you go once you get it the way that you want it then you can just duplicate it as I will do and place it on the other side and just invert this flip it and uh, you can move the circle here and you get your circular chair right here now we're going to duplicate this rectangle scale it down bring the circles to full holding down control and shift make it fully rounded let's bring it down to a bit more to create our cushions select all of them and then drag them out a bit yeah so we have our cushions and we have the base of the sofa so what we're going to do now is that you can draw this freehand but you can also use circles, so I'm going to show you using circles. Good, so we have right here is our first circle and our second circle and our third circle, which is going to be flat out a bit more. Bring it to the edge, turn the snap tool so we can bring it to the edge. Let's move this up a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not bringing to the edge so nicely, so let's take out the snap. You just have to put this manually the best we can. Good. Then we're going to create a shape to cut through the way the circles meet. And we're going to unify the two circles and the shape. Go to path and union, or control shift and plus, and then we're going to bring this down and difference it from the shape that we just created. Then we can delete these nodes.
to make it more smooth. So we've got our shape right here. We use this color, so I'm gonna use that color. And then we're just going to drop it underneath. Good, I think this is looking really good. That's okay, drop it underneath. Like I say, you can always go through and make your changes to make it more smooth, but I'm against time, so I'm just going to go through all of this. Then we're going to just create our shadow. Good. Bending the handles to get the curve. Select that color, the color dropper. And remove the stroke. But lastly, let's add our stilts. There's nothing more than a freehand drawing right here. Get rid of the stroke. Unify them together and drop them underneath. And lastly, we have our shadow good and there we have our sofa so today i showed you how to make the rounded clouds the sofa and the sun all of our icons you can get to download I think this one has a chimney so we can add the chimney ever so quickly I do hope that you enjoy this tutorial and later down the line we're definitely going to go into more information based cross-sectional design but this was a good introduction to it as we're going to go into more complex graphing and complex technical design in ways to visualize data to get to create um, incomprehensive and cohesive ways so that your audience can be able to follow the story that you're trying to portray with your information and your infographic. Good. As again, the font will be there for you to download as well as the icons, a lot of icons, so go out and get your free icons. Until then, just take care of yourselves, get up and design a new dawn. Later.